Will the congregation please rise and join us in singing our opening hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. congregation may please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In holy baptism, Jean Bertram was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Jean and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament for this morning comes to us from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. St. Paul writes, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God, the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we hear from the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, 
a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn. Grace and mercy and peace to each and every one of you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. For 57 years, our dear Jean Bertram beautified our worship space with her musical skills. It would be a daunting, if not nearly impossible, task to try to count the Sunday services, the weddings, the funerals, the midweek Lent and Advent, Christmases, Easter's, and other special services that she spent filling our church with music. Not to mention the time that she spent learning hymns and practicing hymns and learning liturgies and practicing liturgy. I think her dedication to our church's worship life displays a rather telling reality that Jean valued what happens here. That Jean found what the church provided to be a valuable good. Now, I've, I've known Jean a relatively short time compared to most of you. I've only known her for about eight years. But I think I have a pretty good idea that if Jean didn't think something was worthwhile, she wouldn't do it. Is that fair? Yeah. And so the fact that she spent 57 years learning and perfecting and serving, I think shows us that she found this place and the truth offered here worthwhile. Because what happens in the house of worship, what happens in the Christian congregation is the ultimate good, isn't it? It is the hope and the peace and the grace given within these walls that gives us the ability to weather storms like this. When faced with the reality of our own mortality and the mortality of the people around us, there's nothing outside these walls that can offer any true comfort. Sure, we can forget about it for a little bit. But the word of God makes promises that we get nowhere else. The forgiveness and the redemption and the salvation that Christ provides for us from his cross allows us to face a day like today in the midst of tears and grief with hope with knowing that this is not the end. Our gospel for today is this reading about a man named Simeon. And we're going to say these words later in the service together. But when Simeon, he was somebody who spent time in the temple, in the house of worship. And when Christ entered into the temple, not as a grown man, but as an infant, Simeon picks him up, never meeting him before, and says these words, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. When Simeon says, I can depart in peace, he doesn't mean leaving the temple. He means leaving this earthly life. He knew that the Savior was here and that no matter what happened to him between now and his death, it had no true power over him because the Savior had arrived. This is the hope that drives us today as well. This is the peace that we are given in the midst of the loss of someone we hold dear. That our Savior has appeared. That our Savior has given us a forgiveness of sins that washes us clean. Our Savior has guaranteed for us a life eternal with himself. And our Savior, as he burst forth from that tomb on Easter morning, guarantees that Jean will burst forth from this tomb when he returns. Now Jean knew and found value in this, not because she thought that if she played enough 
hymns, God would be happy with her. Or if she served enough on the LWL or whatever other task she might do. But she found value in this because of the promises God made to her. Because in, in her baptism, it's over here. I'm used to it being here. It, it, the bap, in her baptism, God placed his finger upon her and said, you are mine. In communion, the Lord fed her with his very own body and blood. From the word of God, she heard that her sins were forgiven because Christ had died for her and paid the price for her. And in the word of God, she also heard that even though she would die someday, she will rise because Christ rose for her. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the same promises made to you. These are the same promises that Simeon enjoyed, that Jean's family and friends enjoy, that Jean did enjoy and now sees face to face. Because that's where our true hope lies. That's where our peace can be found. In the midst of a world that doesn't make sense, in the midst of a world that breaks our hearts, we come within these walls and we hear the promises of God. When I was talking with Jean about her funeral plans, she actually only gave me one instruction. <laughs> I know, it's amazing, only one, right? But she told me what to preach. She said, tell everybody there, go to church. That's all she wanted. She wanted to make sure that everybody in this congregation was given the admonition, go to church. Because that's where her hope was. That's where our hope is. Because regardless of, of, of the very many things that can go wrong in life, the promises of God will never leave us, no matter what dilemmas, no matter what problems, no matter what diseases, no matter what heartbreak comes our way, the word of God stands firm. And the word of God says this, you are his child. He has chosen you. He has forgiven you. And in him, alongside with Jean, we get to live forever, knowing that our Savior loves us so much to die in our place and to provide us with an eternity with him. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, and be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Jean and to all who mourn comfort in their grief, and a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead and the assurance of a holy and certain hope in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, 
to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Jean and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the, lot, the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Before we sing our closing hymn, I would like to invite you, before, at once the service has ended, we are heading to the Ireton Cemetery for the committal service. And then after that, we will head to the community center for our luncheon. If you would prefer to not join us out at the committal service, you may begin heading that way when the funeral has ended. God's blessings to you all.